Hi everyone, my name is Norman, I run the blog NimbleNeedles.com and today I want to show you how to knit in Taja. In Taja is a color work technique that enables you to create different color blocks or panels in your project. This allows you to transfer complex designs and even pictures into knitting. As most of it is knit in stockinette stitch, it's actually not very hard to learn. It just requires a bit of patience and some careful planning. So let's dive right into it. So the idea behind Intage is working with many separate yarns or bobbins at the same time using a special joining method. By twisting the yarn as you change color, you can knit blocks or panels in different colors without creating any visible gaps. Unlike in Fair Isle, you're not carrying two or more yarns at the same time and you're not creating any floats on the backside. You only ever knit with one yarn at a time. Let's show you an example. I'll start super super easy and just knit a little square to show you the techniques. The starting point of all entire projects is a chart where each little box represents a stitch. A knit stitch on the right side and a purl stitch on the wrong side. And before you can start knitting, you need to figure out how many bobbins you will need. So what you have to do is you have to go through the first row with a color change and count the bobbins. So in this case we have a teal panel here, so we need a teal bobbin. And then we have the red panel here, so we need a red bobbin. And then we change to teal again, so you need another teal one. You cannot carry the yarn across. So you can buy professional bobbins like this one, but you can also create your own using cardboard. If you don't mind that they may run away, you can also wind up the yarn in little balls. And uh, for finishing up, you will also need a tapestry needle. So let's knit our little square here together. I already knit three rows in stockinette stitch. Stockinette stitch is probably the most popular stitch for intarsia knitting, but you can actually combine this technique with any other pattern as well. So cables, lace, even socks, this all is possible. And you start, or I already always start a new intarsia panel by joining in a new yarn one stitch before the actual color change. So what I do is I pick up the bobbin, unwind a bit of yarn, and then I place the new color in between my working yarn and the project like this. And then I knit one stitch and that way I trap the new color on the back side of the project. And then I change colors, but what I do is I twist the new yarn around twice, like so. And then I knit one stitch. And then I tuck on the tags, and that way you create a very, very tight join that doesn't risk creating any gaps. And then I continue knitting. So my chart tells me to one, two, three, four, five, six stitches in red. So I'm knitting five stitches here. And now it's time to join in the next color. So I pick up my teal bobbin, unwind a bit of yarn, and again I place it in between my project and the working yarn. Then I knit one stitch and trap it on the back side. And now I change colors, but first I twist it once and twice. And only then do I knit the next stitch. So I have it twisted, see? And then I knit the next stitch. I pull the tails tight and then I continue 
knitting. And that way you create a very, very neat join you can use for other projects as well, actually, not just for Intage knitting. So that was the first row. What happens on the pearl side? Well, you have to basically, you have to continue like that. So obviously you need to purl the first couple of stitches until you reach the point where you need to change yarn. And here there is one golden rule. Always pick up the new color from underneath, from underneath. So the previous yarn gets trapped above. And when you knit the next stitch, first tuck on gently on the new color so you tighten up that stitch. Then you knit this stitch and then you tuck on the tail of the previous yarn and tighten up that as well. Give it a gentle tuck. And that way you create a nice little join without any gaps. Let's do it one more time. So I'm purling towards the next color change. And now again, pick up the new color from below so the previous color rests on top of it. Tuck on the new color to tighten up that stitch. Knit one stitch, pull on gently on the previous yarn to tighten up that stitch and continue knitting. The technique is exactly the same on the knit side. So you knit all stitches until you reach the point where you need to change colors. And now again, you have to pick up the new color from below like this. So the previous yarn is between the new working yarn and the project. And then you tuck on the new working yarn. Sorry. Then you knit one stitch and then you pull the tail tight of the previous yarn. And then you continue knitting. It's quite important that you uh, tighten up those stitches on both sides. Otherwise you will create gaps as well. Let's do it one more time on the knit side. So here we need to change colors again. So I pick up the working yarn, the new color from below. So the old yarn rests on top. I hope you can see this because there's a lot of tails hanging around. So I pick up the new color. I tighten it up, knit one stitch. I pull on the tail and then I continue knitting. So let's take a look at the back side quickly and what we created. This is where we joined in the new yarns and as you can see this is invisible on the right side and there aren't any gaps. And this is where we changed color and there aren't any gaps either. If you continue knitting you will be creating this sort of meandering line that prevents these two panels from falling apart. There is one last important thing you need to know. If you finish a color panel, like in this row, here we will knit across in the teal color across all stitches. There are no reds anymore. But what you have to do is as you knit across all stitches, let's show you quickly, you need to weave out, as I say, you need to weave out these colors so you are not creating any gaps at the top. So what I do is here we have another color change. Now obviously the next stitch will be in the same color so I'm not really changing color. But you can already see how this little tail um, is hanging around and this stitch is quite a bit loose. So what I do is I twist the yarn one more time like before but I continue knitting in the same color and now I can tighten it up and prevent any gaps. Let's do it one more time. So when I reach the point where I would uh, change colors I pick up the old yarn from below and twist it 
but I'm continuing knitting with the same color or the same yarn. And then I tuck on the tail and tighten the gap of the previous yarn. So what happens if you have these sort of diagonal color changes? Well, it's really just the same technique. In this case, you will knit one stitch and into the next color. You have to tighten it up, but otherwise the method remains the same. You have to bring up the yarn from underneath, so then old previous yarn rests on top and gets trapped in between and then you continue knitting. And if the color change or the diagonal color change is towards the right, then you start with the new color one stitch into the other color and again you make sure it's twisted so it gets trapped on the back side but otherwise it's really the same thing. The only thing you should know is that whenever you bridge more than one stitch, so two, three or four, then you will have to create floats in between like in Fair Isle. So you would have to trap the yarn like this on the back side. And when you return, then you can pick it up again and start from here. Oh, and there's one last little thing. Once you finish knitting, you will have to weave in quite some tails. This was a basic little square and we already have one, two, three, four, five, six tails to weave in. And for this N here, there are 14 tails. And bigger Intarsia projects will have 50 or even 100 tails to weave in. So if you hate weaving in ends, then it might not be the best technique for you. But on the other hand, it um, allows you to knit amazing, like truly amazing patterns. Anyway, that's it. That's how you knit Intarsia. I really hope I was able to teach you this amazing technique. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Comment with your questions and your feedback. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel. Happy knitting.